Jesus' name. Lord, you came to give life to all of us. God life. Hallelujah. Not just a life to get by, but an abundant life. A life that flows with the Spirit of God. An eternal life. A life that you've known in eternity past and have shared it with us for eternity future. We thank you this morning, Lord. We thank you and we celebrate your birth, Lord, that God was born in flesh and dwelt among us and now lives within us forevermore. The greatest gift that could ever be given, you've given. And it's a gift that truly keeps on giving for eternity. And for that, Lord, and all you do and all that you are, we celebrate you. And give you praise, glory, and honor for you alone are deserving of it, Lord. We bless you and thank you, Lord, for this gracious gift of eternal life. To know you, the only true God, is the greatest gift that man can ever have. In Jesus' name. And everybody said praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give him a hand clap. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless all of you. Hallelujah. Thank you all for being here this morning. Merry Christmas. And uh, thank you, Tim. Great job as always. Appreciate your opening. And Suzanne and Peter and Tammy, thank you for leading us in, in worship this morning. Praise God. God is good. Amen. Thank the Lord. God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Don't you? I just love it. There's something about the Christmas songs, you know, the worship, and uh, it's, it just really touches you. It brings back, you know, all of your childhood and all those things, too, but it's it just, it, it's so about Jesus, you know, just about what this season is really, truly all about. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, I think I've got uh, some things I could say, but I don't think I will. Praise the Lord. No, you won't be too disappointed, praise the Lord. But uh, I just feel like going right into the Word of God this morning and yes. skip my usual five-minute monologue here, praise the Lord. <laughs> It'll be my gift to you, praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, praise God. Let's go right to, uh, I, I want to begin with Luke chapter 1, and I'm going to read a fairly lengthy opening here just to kind of set everything up because we'll be working right out of these scriptures. So Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 38, Sheila. And again, God bless all of you. Appreciate you being here this morning and just believing for a beautiful Christmas with all of your family and friends. Amen. It's snow if you want it. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm good with it. Praise the Lord. Sounds like I'm going to have to be. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Okay, so in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Praise the Lord. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Yes. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, 
Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Luke chapter 2, and I want to read verses 1 through 14, Sheila. Luke 2, 1 through 14. came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, unto Judea, and into the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill toward men. Praise God. First of all, the scripture tells us that this season, and we've heard it from y'all this morning that we're speaking and sharing your uh, things that God has spoken to you and things that you feel to share with us, and I appreciate that. But the first thing we have to notice here is this is a season of taxing. It is a season of taxing in a lot of people's lives. People here today, uh, you know, for some this season isn't necessarily great joy. But it's taxing. There's depression. There's loneliness. Maybe the first Christmas without a loved one. Maybe a, a Christmas where there's loss financially and, and uh, the inability to do all the things that you would like to do at this season. It's a season of taxing. And I want to be clear that the taxing isn't coming from God. This taxing wasn't coming from God. What anybody may be going through here today, it's not coming from God. Amen? God is good all the time. Yes. In fact, He is the God yes. of favor. Yes. Whatever the enemy means for evil, God can use it for good. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Luke chapter 2 and verse 4. So they all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee. Now, Galilee in Hebrew, it's, uh, if you want to look it up in Strong's Concordance, it's 1551 in the Hebrew, and it means a revolving door or repetitive cycles. So Joseph and Mary left a comfort zone. They left a place where it was just business as usual, right? Mm -hmm. During this taxing time, they were forced to leave their comfort zone. Uh -huh. They find a house of their lineage. And that's what God does in taxing times. Yeah. The enemy brings taxing, but yeah. God uses it to help us move out of the comfort zones and find out who we really are. Yes. Yes. Find out what our lineage truly yes. is. Amen? Yes. And if you're born again, I can tell you this morning without any doubt, you are of the house of David. Yes. You yes. are royalty. Amen? Yes. You are the younger sons and daughters of, 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 uh, of God, but the siblings of Jesus Christ himself, who is of the house of David. Amen? Luke chapter 4, look at uh, verses 16 through 19, Sheila. Luke 4, 16 through 19. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. This is Jesus' first ministry. This is his first sermon. Amen. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written... The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that is the year of favor. It's translated the year of favor. Look at verse 20 through 29 now, Sheila, same chapter.
And he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear witness and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and when great famine was throughout all the land. But none to, unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah, the prophet. And none of them were cleansed, except Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. And they rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him into the brow of the hill where, they were, where the city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Amen. God has sent me to announce the year of favor of the goodness of God. Amen. Of the favor of God. But favor doesn't always look like favor. Jesus is saying, here I am, I've come to tell you about God's favor for you. Amen? And what ha what's the result of the favor? They're going to throw him off a cliff. It doesn't look like favor. It's favor, but it doesn't look like favor. Amen? And some of y'all may be thinking, well, I know it's the Christmas season, and this is a time we celebrate the birth of our Savior, but it's not, it doesn't look like favor favor to me. It doesn't look like God has favored me. It doesn't look like God has done something for me out of this birth because I'm still going through crap. I still got all kinds of issues. I still got all kinds of sadness. I still got all kinds of depression. I still got loss. I still have things going on that just don't line up with the goodness of God that's supposed to be in my life. Amen. Look at Genesis chapter 37 verses 3 through 4. 3 and 4 please. Genesis 37 3 and 4. And I'm not trying to depress anybody today. I'm happy. Yes. I'm good. Amen. Yes. I'm glad that I know the Lord. I'm, I, I love to celebrate this time of the year. But at the same time, amen, I, I recognize there are people that are not this happy. Yes. I mean, they're going through stuff. And they're wondering, where's God? And, and how, how come, if God is so good, why am I suffering? Why am I going through this? Why isn't my family together? Why is it? that I've got financial struggles. Why is this happening? Why aren't they saved? Why didn't this happen? Why did they have to die? You know, all of those kinds of things that people go through in life. And amen. We know if we are believers, God has come to do us something great. He has come to give us life and that more abundantly. He has come to bless us, to give us His favor, His grace. And yet, we know that there are people that are struggling with things. How do we address that? Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. He was his favorite. Mm -hmm. He favored him over all the others, right? And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Praise the Lord. Verse 20. Joseph's favorite. Come now, therefore, and let us kill him. Yeah. Cast him into some pit, and we'll say some evil beast has devoured him, and we'll see what will become of his dreams. Yeah. Yeah. So Joseph's father put a coat on him that declared, he's my favorite son. He, he's highly favored. Yeah. And things started looking different. Bad things started happening almost immediately. God has given us a robe of righteousness. Yeah. And I can tell you this much from experience. When you start saying what God says, the enemy is going to come to try to deny it, to try to get you to move off of that word, to, keep, to get you to, to doubt the favor, to doubt the promise, to doubt what God's trying to do in your life. Amen? You are favored. So you cannot give up just because it doesn't look like you're favored. Just because it doesn't look like it. It has nothing to do. We have to believe it. We have to declare it in order for it to manifest, in order for us to see it. Praise the Lord. Look at Genesis chapter 39, verses 1 and 2. I won't tell you the whole story. Most of you know it, but Joseph was sold into slavery. They haul him off to Egypt, and he's made a slave. So he was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him. 
off the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. He's a slave. Yeah. His brothers tried to kill him. Then they sell him into slavery. And God is with Joseph. He was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Praise the Lord. Chapter 41, verses 39 and 40. It's a long story. He then gets accused of uh, trying to molest the, his master's wife. Gets thrown into prison. He's abused there. He's taken advantage of. He's still in prison, but the scripture says, hey, God's still with him. Doesn't look like favor. Imagine the years he spent knowing that he was favored of his father and that God was with him, and yet nothing good was happening. It was just going downhill one thing after another. Right. And the Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. This is the big man. This is the Pharaoh talking to this slave. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. From a slave to the highest position in all of Egypt, the most powerful nation on earth at the time. Amen. Second only to the Pharaoh. Yeah. Praise the Lord. The favor of God. Yes. Don's talking about it. It promises. The favor that God has promised. Yes. Haven't seen it come to pass. Joseph had to endure. Yeah. He had to keep believing. He did. In spite of everything that was telling him, that was a joke. What a fool, you idiot. You should have never put the coat on. You should have just, you know, hid away somewhere. But... God was with him. Yes. And God had a plan and God had a purpose. Yes. And our time is not God's time. God doesn't work in time. God works in the fullness of time, which is yes. when his plan comes to pass, it will happen even as he has yes. declared it. Regardless of how it looks to us, we have to continue to believe that, uh, like Mary. Be it unto me, Lord, even as you have spoken. Even though this doesn't look like favor, I'm believing it's favor and it's going to come to pass. It has to come to pass even as you have said. Yes. Amen. Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19 again. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Jesus stands up before these people and he tells them, I'm here to tell you the favor of the Lord is available to you. And they, they think what marvelous things he said. And then he goes a little bit further and he said, now you are the same people, by the way. Who God has wanted to favor for millennia. But when God healed, or when God brought, finished his famine and fed a widow, she wasn't a Jew. She wasn't one that was highly favored. She was just somebody who believed God. Yeah. You didn't get the favor because you didn't believe the favor. Right. When there were lepers all over Israel, the only leper that God healed was a Syrian, yeah. a Gentile. Yes who came and believed God yes. for favor. Yes. When the favor was yours and you wouldn't receive it, and you wouldn't believe it, you didn't get the benefit from it. Right. Right. Even though God had promised, right. you're my chosen people. Right. right? So the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the year of favor, the time of favor has come. Praise the Lord. The favor of God. Luke chapter 2, 8 through 10. Praise the Lord. I don't know. Who, maybe there's nobody here that's going through anything. But if there is, I feel like this is what God is trying to tell us. Amen. That hang on, there's favor coming. God has promised and it will come to pass. Don't give up. Don't let your situation or your circumstance dictate to you what God's truth is for you. Do not let the enemy depress you and, and cause you to be fearful and afraid and to give up simply because you haven't seen the manifestation. If you're a believer, it has to come. It has to come to pass even as he has spoken. We just got to keep the confession going. Be it unto me, Lord. Be it unto me. Just as you said, no matter what the consequences may look like right now, I'm believing, Lord, that it will come to pass even as you have spoken. So there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid, or they were freaking out. It was awesome. In the midst of darkness, God came to deliver a message. Yes. In the midst of your dark season, the time of taxing, 
God wants to bring good news to you. He wants all people to know that the glory of the Lord can be revealed. And that glory is peace on earth and goodwill to men. God wants that you to have peace. God wants you to experience His goodwill. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 11 and 12. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the King, Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. And I've read this for years, and I've heard it read since I was a kid, but I never really saw this until I started studying this a couple weeks ago. This will be a sign unto you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. Why is that a sign? Well, I can tell you. I found out that these shepherds that were in these fields round about there were raising the sheep that were used as sacrifice sheep or for the Passover, for every sacrifice that was given. These were the sheep that they were raising. This was an area, amen, where those sheep were raised because it was close proximity, amen, to, to Jerusalem and to, to where the temple was. And so what they would do when these lambs were first born, they would wrap them in swaddling. They would wrap them in cloth and put them in the feeding troughs so that they wouldn't maim one another, so that they wouldn't get marred up. Because if they had a spot or a wrinkle on them, they couldn't be used. In other words, if they had a scratch or a scrape or missing hair or whatever, then they couldn't be used as a sacrificial animal. So he's telling them, here's the sign for you. Your sacrifice, the sacrifice, the one that all these animals have been pointing to, Amen. Is going to be found wrapped in swaddling like you do with your lambs. He's going to be wrapped in swaddling, lying in a manger, lying in a place where he's protected. Amen. From any harm. Amen. That would come on him because he's the perfect sacrifice. He is unblemished, without flaw. Amen. And that's the sign that he was given so that these, these shepherds knew immediately. This is He that has been spoken of. This is the one. This is the Messiah. This is the sacrifice of God. This is the one who takes away the sin yes. of the world. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes. They, uh, they found Him in a manger in a feeding trough. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You feed on Jesus. Yes. Not your circumstance. Not your problems. Not your consequences to your behavior even. You feed on Jesus. You continue to feed on Jesus no matter what is going on in your life. Hallelujah. No matter what you're experiencing. Fear not. Verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. I'm bringing you good tidings. I've got some good news for you. Great joy. It'll be for everybody. Amen. Fear not. In the midst of your taxing, do not be afraid. I've got, a, I've got good news for you. Praise the Lord. Something really good is happening. Something really powerful is going to take place. If you won't give up, if you don't give in to fear, if you don't give in to depression, if you don't just throw in the towel and say it hasn't happened yet, there's something good going to happen in the midst of you. Praise the Lord. Verse 14. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. That's God. That's what the flock is supposed to feed on. Yes. When you feed on Jesus, Luke 2, verse 13, suddenly. Yes. You know, it's weird. You go a whole lifetime waiting for something, and then suddenly. It's a sudden one. Even though it's been a long time coming. Even though all those times you've been waiting and expecting it and it didn't happen and it hasn't happened and you're going, oh my God, we'll every day. And then suddenly. If you continue to feed on Jesus, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heaven praising God and saying, glory to God. Peace. Goodwill. Hallelujah. Amen. Suddenly a message is released from the Spirit into this realm into the natural, from the supernatural. Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 28. 26 through 28. Sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. 
And the angel came into, unto her and said, Hail thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Praise the Lord. Yes. Mary's highly favored. Yes. But it did not look like favor. Right. Praise the Lord. You may think, well, wow, what a powerful, wonderful thing that was. She's favored. But it didn't look like favor. Look at Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. In other words, before they had any relationship, she's pregnant. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Hey, she's pregnant, and it ain't my kid. I'm not marrying this woman, right? This is what Mary's dealing with. God said, hey, you're highly favored. Be it unto me, she said. And then the guy she's going to be married to. Listen, this isn't uh, Des Moines, Iowa in two, you know, 2001 or 2020. This is, this is the Middle East where this woman could be killed and would be killed if it came to anybody's knowledge that she was pregnant out of, out of wedlock. Praise the Lord. God wants to birth something in you in a time of taxing. Hallelujah. Mary, thou art highly favored. Yes. Pregnant out of wedlock. And her fiance is going to put her away privately. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your thing is. I don't know what your taxing is. But don't give up. Yeah. Don't give in. No. Luke 1, verse 36 to 42. Praise God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. Now, this is what's interesting to me, too. Elizabeth has the same thing happen to her that happens to Mary. Elizabeth's been barren all of her life, and all of a sudden, in her old age, now she's pregnant. The blessing she gets, it's all good. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same favor, and yet for one person, it looks Magnificent. It's wonderful. All of her life she's wanted to have a child. Now, bang, the favor of the Lord is on her and she's pregnant. Mary, last thing she was thinking about was having a kid. And bang, she's pregnant. And it's the yeah. same favor of God, but they look total opposites. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Praise the Lord. So, Mary arose in those days and went unto the hill country with haste into the city of Judah. She went to see her cousin Elizabeth. They're both pregnant. Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. And he, she entered into the house of Zechariah and, and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, in Elizabeth's womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, She's prophesying, she's speaking in the Holy Spirit, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Here's what I'm telling you. Yes. When you're being taxed, you need people of faith around yes. you. People that will agree with what God is speaking to you. That's why we have church. Yes. Church isn't just because we got to have some place to go. And yes, you can go to heaven without church. But you'll suffer through hell all the time you're not with other believers. Because you're going to have to be faced with crap all the time. God has given you favor. God has given you a promise. But it doesn't look like it's ever going to happen unless you get around some other people that believe in those promises. Amen. We need to be with people of like faith. Hallelujah. Amen. You need people of faith around you. The, the, the word here, uh, taxing, is the, uh, he, in the Hebrew word, it's arak, A-R-A-K, and it means to set the battle in order or to begin the, the, the battle. In another place, it's called magas, N-A-W-G-A-S, and that means to harass, to tyrannize, to distress, or oppress. That's what this taxing is about. And I know it was a physical, natural kind of taxation. But God's trying to show us something yes, here. He is. The birth of Jesus was yes. on this wise. 
Everybody was getting taxed, hallelujah. When they needed God the most, they were being taxed the most. And they had to look beyond the taxing and realize even the taxation would get them to a place where they, they would find their, their true identity and they would be with other people of like faith, people from the same genealogy, amen, that would help them to deal with this taxation, amen. And in the Greek word, it's even more devastating. The word taxing is grapho, which actually means grave. It was a kind of diet. Amen? So I'm a, they, they, it was chaotic. Yeah. Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. I know I'm random as all get out like I usually am, but I'm telling you, I, I saw things in this. Look, again, I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm okay. But stuff happens in my life too. And you try to figure it out, and there isn't always answers. But God has promised things. Yes. Amen. You still got to deal yes. with the reality, but you got to deal with it based on what God has said, not yes. just on the fact. Amen. Yes. There's a truth that is greater than whatever the fact might be that you're facing. Yes. Praise the Lord. And that's what we have to keep our focus. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light, amen? Without form and void. It literally translates, there was chaos. There wasn't any kind of form or, 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 or reason or anything to what was going on. It was just chaotic. It was just yes. stuff, amen? So it says that it was chaos. And chaos is the end of what's not working anymore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Think about in a business, in your relationships. When it doesn't work anymore, what happens? Yeah. Chaos. You end up with chaos. You end up with stuff that just yeah. that you wouldn't think would ever happen. It's happening all the time now because everything's out of control. Yeah. It's not working. Right. Whatever worked before isn't working anymore. Amen? But here's the good news. It can be a turning point. It can be the beginning of something new, yes. which is what God did. He took the chaos and He spoke light. Yes. Amen? And brought... Reason out of chaos. Praise the Lord. Remember, Mary and Joseph left a place of repetitive cycles. Yep. Just same old thing over and over and over. Galilee, it's yep. called. Amen. And they came in a time of taxing to Bethlehem, the house of bread. Yes. Amen. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The formula for recovering from chaos or taxing is Genesis 1 and 2. The earth was without form and void. It was chaos, darkness, and the deep. And the Spirit of God moved on the chaos. Yes. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 1, verse 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. God hovered. The Holy Spirit hovered. Praise the Lord. And revelation and light. The light of the world comes to the world. And I'm telling you this morning, if you let the Holy Spirit come over you, yes. he'll bring light. He'll bring revelation. Yes. A word from God is all you really need That's right. to overcome whatever the circumstance or the situation is. Amen. All you need is something from God to say, hey, you're highly favored and I'm yeah. with you. I'll get you through this. There's a positive result coming from this. Amen? Yes, Lord. He yes. came that you might have life. Yes. And grace will transform yes. your chaos yes. into the peace Amen. and the glory of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 2 and verse 4. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judah, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. Nazareth, the word Nazareth literally translates preservation or self-preservation. They left the place where they were trying to get things together themselves, where they yeah. were self-preservation -preserv is what was the, the rule, amen. And they went to Judah, which is praise. They left the place of trying to protect themselves yes. and work the thing out and figure it out. Yes. They went to just praising God. Yes. 
and nothing changed, nothing had altered the situation, but they just left that and just started praising God. Just started worshiping the Lord. Amen. They went to Judah. So you can lead the chaos. You're highly favored. Yes. That's the same word that Paul used when he said, you are accepted in the beloved. The beloved is Jesus. Yes. We are accepted in Christ. Hallelujah. We are highly favored. Yes. Praise the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Yes. Peace on earth. Goodwill to all men. Yes. Luke chapter 10, verse 21 through 24. Now, I know we have to, you know, you have to connect the dots when it comes to the scriptures. But here he says, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, hast revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father, and who the Father is but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him unto his disciples and said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see the things that you see. This is living in faith in the new covenant. The new covenant is God has become our father. Yes. We are sons. Yes. He is the father. Amen. That's the relationship that he has brought to us, a father-son relationship. Amen. We're no longer servants. We're no longer aliens of the covenant, we have a new covenant, and that covenant is God is my Father, mm -hmm. Abba. Our spirit cries out, Abba, or Daddy, Father, yeah. praise the Lord. So John chapter 10, John chapter 10, verse 30 to 35. Remember, he's talking to Jews in the first century. We read this from a 21st century yeah, mentality. We do. Amen? I and my father are one. Mm -hmm. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Why? Because they, they wouldn't even speak the name of God. They wouldn't even write the name of God. They'd leave, they'd leave it hyphenated. They'd leave it dashes and they'd leave letters out and they just wouldn't, and they'd never speak the name God. The name of God. Yahweh or Jehovah. Mm -hmm. So I and my father are one. This is Jesus telling them. This one, you won't even say his name. He's so holy, you won't write his name or, or speak his name. He's, that's my dad. Yeah. And we're one. We're, the, yeah. we're the, one and the same. Yes. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. Why? Because he's blaspheming as far as they're concerned. This guy's nuts, you know? Yeah. And Jesus said, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? And the Jews answered him saying, for a good work, we're not stoning you. We're not stoning you for something good you've done. But for blasphemy, because you're, being, you're making yourself a man like God. Yep. Jesus answered, that, isn't it written in your law, I said, ye are gods, and that is in the Old Testament. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. In other words, whatever it says, it's, got, it's the truth. Whether you like it or not, it can't be undone, it can't be broken. And the Jews answered him, saying, for good work we stone thee not, right? So the scripture cannot be broken, praise the Lord. They, again, they wouldn't speak or write the name of God, but the scripture cannot be broken. This was revolutionary, what Jesus was telling them. This concept to those Jews was blasphemy. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we think, okay, well, that's them because they, they're first century Jews. But look here, we got the same problem. We don't yeah. believe in this father-son relationship the way we're supposed to. Yeah. This is the good news. The good news is you're highly favored. I don't care what it looks like. Your daddy is God and he loves you and he's got a plan for your life. And no matter what the circumstances are, amen, he's your God. He's your dad. And he wants you to cry, Abba, Father, in the face of whatever your mess is. Just praise him. Just have confidence in him. Like Tim says week after week, trust him. That's all he really wants. If you'll trust him, you can have whatsoever you will. Praise the Lord. Look at, uh, you don't have to turn there, Sheila. Uh, Sheila I'll just read it because I want to read it from the, from the message Bible. This is 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children of God. That's who we really are. 
But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. Right. It has no idea who he is or what he's up to. This is exactly what Don was talking about. This is the chaos. This is the confusion. This is the, the, the weirdness of our whole world that is in darkness. Yeah. Amen. What's the darkness? They can't see God. They can't see the light of the world. They don't. They hate us. Why? What have we done? Not we haven't done anything. They hate us because they don't understand us. Right. Because of our relationship with God, they don't know Him, so they don't recognize us. They don't know what He's doing. Right. They don't know what His agenda is. Right. Right. But we do. That's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. Because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. That's right. Praise the Lord. Behold what manner of love the Father has for us to call us sons. What a quality of love that God wants to be your daddy. The world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. We're diagnosed with something, but we say we're healed. Yes. The bank tells us one thing, but we're saying we prosper. Yes. Mm -hmm. The weatherman says no snow. Yep. We say snow. Let it snow. Yes. Praise the Lord. Snow. I'm going to make it snow in here. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory. Confessions. Yes. That's right. We talk like our dad. We sound like our dad. And because they don't know him, they don't know us. They don't understand us. Because they don't understand him. Jesus came to give us that quality of life. That God life. That abundant life. Praise the Lord. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. All things are delivered unto me of my Father. No man knows the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. That's what Jesus came for. Amen. He really is a good, good Father. Yes. Praise the Lord. Verse 28 through 30. Careful attention to what he says here. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take my yoke, or be yoked with me, right? And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 14. So if you think for some reason Jesus doesn't see you as his bride, or as his uh, younger brother or sister, however you want to describe it. He, he, he uses different metaphors, but for one, we know we are the bride of Christ. We are the body of Christ, all right? He tells us, be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? And yet he tells us, come to me, and I'll yoke up with you. Mm -hmm. That tells me in and of itself yep. that we have to be as righteous as Jesus. Yes. We have to be as holy as Jesus. Yes. We have to be as pure as Jesus, mm -hmm. or he would be denying his own word. Right. He wants to, we are the bride of Christ. Yes. Be not unequally yoked right. with unbelievers right. and the unrighteous. Come to me yes. and I'll share my yoke. We will be yoked together. Yes. I'll declare your righteousness. Yes. I'll declare your holiness. Yes. I'll declare your acceptance. Yes. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. He's made us equal. Yep. Yes. That's Mind-boggling if you think about it. He's made us equal with God. Yes. Awesome. Yes. That almost makes you want to slap me. I mean, it just sounds, it sounds like what it sounded like to the Jews. Yeah. It sounds blasphemous. But that's what he has done. He's made us equal with God. Yes. Praise the Lord. He's made us righteous. He's made us children of light. What, what uh, connection has righteousness with unrighteousness? What connection has light with darkness. None. We are righteous. We are light. We are the light that God called into the world. We are what came out of the chaos. These are the days that we, 
We are to be delivered. Yes. Not by what you do, but by the birth of Jesus, by what he did by being born into this earth. Jesus in a manger. Feed on him. Feed on Jesus. Feed on his truth. David said in Psalm 23, you prepare a table before me. You feed me in the presence of my enemies. And that's what we do when we feed on Jesus in the midst of the enemy. Amen. And it, God sets a table for us and said, hey, anything you want is right here. Have at it. And my cup runneth over. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're about done here. Genesis chapter 22. I want to read verses 5 through 13. Genesis 22, 5 through 13. I want just not this to be Christmas. I want this to be a new birth for all of us. I want us to really begin to live out the life that Jesus came to give us. And that may set some other people free. There are other people that have got the same, the same uh, favor of God on them. But to them it looks like it, the difference between Elizabeth and Mary. We're, we're, we're excited. We're having the, this reality is coming to pass. Even though we thought it would never happen. Yeah. Amen. We've been barren. We've been all these things. But God has shown yes. us favor. We've we got nothing to do but be celebrating and happy about it. But there's other people young in the Lord and just beginning and coming up. And, and, and now I'm not talking about age-wise, but I'm talking about when they come to the Lord and, and how they're taught and so on and so forth. And they're like Mary, this young virgin. And she's got the same favor as we've got, but she doesn't see it as favor. She's thinking, this is a mess. I thought I was getting the favor of God. And look, hey, my, my, my man's leaving me. I'm going to be left here with, you know, just all this. I could be killed for it, you know, for this very thing. Praise the Lord. They need us. Amen. And when we come into contact, the Spirit will come alive in us to share with them what God's wanting to do. Yes. That the favor is genuine for them yes. as it is for us. Yes. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. But you all probably know the story of Abraham. Abraham, Don talked about it earlier. He was promised a son. The first was of his own flesh. They, they made something happen with a with a concubine, so to speak, and they had Ishmael. Ishmael was not the promised son because God wanted it to be miraculous. It was going to be a thing from God and not something that man could work up. And so eventually it comes to pass as God had spoken. The favor comes and they see it and the result is this child, this son, Isaac. Amen. And now God has said to, to Abram, I want you to give your son, your only son, the one who through the seed is supposed to come that will save the entire world. Him I want you to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yep. Abraham's learned a few things. He has failed a few times, Tim. Mm -hmm. yep. Amen? But he got back up. Yep. Kept getting up, and it kept going on until he gets to this place. And God said, and somehow Abraham says, I don't know how he's going to do this. But he's promised me that through this child, yep. right. he's going to bless the entire world. That's so right. if I kill him, he's going to have to resurrect him. Yep. If he's telling me to do it, he's going to have to do something yep. to bring him back. Yep. So he yep. moves. I'm not saying he wasn't. There wasn't any trepidation. I'm just saying he just went ahead and did it, even in the fear of it. Yes. So Isaac spake unto Abram his father, and he said, Father, and he said, Here am I, my son, Abram says. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abram said, My son, and look at this, God will provide himself. And if I'd written that, that himself would have been a capital H. Yep will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. They came to a place which God had told him of, and Abram built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abram stretched forth his hand, took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abram, Abram. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not your hand upon this lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, or that thou believest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abram went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And we say, Well, this is a type of Christ. Well, it is, but it's more than that. God will provide himself a lamb. He provided a ram, not a lamb. The ram is the father of the lamb. Praise the Lord. The son had not yet been given. 
God's showing us a type. That this son that's going to come, he may be a lamb when he comes, but he was a ram. Before the foundation of the world. The word was with God. The word was God. What came in the flesh was God. It was a ram born into this world as a lamb. It was the father. That's why Jesus said, I and my father are one. Emmanuel. God with us. The ram comes as a lamb. The father as a son. God with us. See, we, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't want to get into a big debate. I'm just saying. I don't know why, but somehow it may seem like we can diminish Jesus to something that we could believe would be in us. But it's hard to believe that God Almighty, the Creator, the self-existent One, He that has ever been and will ever be, is one and the same and has come to live within us. Our Creator lives within His creation. The Ram. What marvelous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We're called children. The children of God. That's who we really are, the scripture says. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously. It has no idea who he is or what he's up to. Praise God. Luke chapter 2, and we'll read verses 1 through 14 again. Wrapping up here. Then it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one unto his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judah and unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You'll find him, the babe, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill yes. toward men. So if this is a season of taxing for you. The taxing isn't coming from God. Leave your same old, same old. Leave your Galilee. Mm -hmm. And come to Judah. Yeah. And begin to praise the Lord. Amen. He is the God of favor. Yes. Yes. Praise yes. the Lord. Last scripture and we'll close with this. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Praise God. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God himself has said, there's no separation between us. We're not being unequally yoked. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You will recover your life. You get tax relief from God. Yes. For the highly favored yes. receive tax relief. Yes. Fear not. You found favor with God. And with God, yes. nothing shall be impossible. Yes. Yes. Praise Lord. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Amen, amen. God bless you. Greatest time of the year, but it should be the same every day of the year. He comes alive every time we acknowledge him. Yes. You are highly favored and blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you. Go in that blessing. Amen. Have a great Christmas. See you back here next week. Good to see you.